Well, hello, this is Apostle, and I trust all is well. My, my, my times have changed, and everyone has to make adjustments to be successful. It's happening in every area. Uh, it's happening in business, in, in education, in industry. Everyone is retooling to remain on the cutting edge. Now, we, the church, we must not be left behind, and therefore we must retool for revival and to flourish in the coming days. For the past 25 years, I've hosted 25 years. I've hosted the Strategist Conference in Houston, equipping and empowering people in uh, for ministry to be excellent and to be effective. This year, the Strategist Conference, October the 18th through the 21st, will be a hybrid experience. People, both in person and in the virtual audience, pastors, evangelists, and other fivefold ministry leaders uh, will be here. And I want you to come. Let me show you how to improve your staff to help you accomplish more. I'll be covering topics like retooling your staff uh, and your workers, retooling evangelism strategies for expansion, retooling financial strategies for increase, retooling church for revival, retooling social media for greater impact and much more. I've made the registration most affordable uh, for you and your staff. Now you have a choice. You can either be here and experience it in person, and that's going to be that's going to be epic, or you can be in the virtual audience. Uh, there will be both day and night uh, uh, events, which will be on demand online as well for all registered, so you can view them at your convenience. But how to be registered. Go to strategiesnlc.com for early registration and more information. Registration has begun. I'm saving a seat for you. Go to strategiesnlc.com. It's time to retool ministry for revival. Meet me and Lady B in this hybrid 2021 Strategist Conference. It will be an experience like none other. Well, this is the day the Lord's made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining our program today. Listen, we have a powerful message of faith that I know is going to bless your life. Now, to all of you, listen, who say, yes, I need more and I want more, well, we have more prepared for you. I want you to subscribe to my, uh, my YouTube channel. I'm working on building it. It's going to be great. We'll be launching it soon. But, uh, and we have information and we have sermons out there already. But I have a launch date plan that's going to really be exceptional. Now, <clears throat> those of you men uh, who want to be a part of my course that I'm teaching on men at work, man to man, that course is started now and you'll be able to go out to uh, our website and you'll be able to go there and get the book, of course, uh, get the book, Men at Work, and I'm teaching it every second and fourth uh, Sunday evening. Follow us along. There's a certificate that you're going to get at the end of it. It's going to be great. I'm showing men how to be men, men how to be men of God. Amen and amen. Of course, the announcer will come and give you some information on other products that we have, and that's how you need to invest in those products. It'll bless you. Now, those of you who say, listen, I want that, I, I want to be a part of your partner base so I can receive those faith building letters. Well, they'll put that on the screen as well. And when you have a faith, you have a faith fight you're in, I'd like to know. Uh, you have a prayer request, I'd like to know. And so when you uh, follow through and you, you make the call, you'll get my voice, I'll tell you how to leave your faith uh, uh, request there. I'll pray for you. I'll send you my faith building letters. And many people say they arrive right on time. All right, let's get into the lesson for today. And uh, then uh, we'll be right back after this. Life is a journey, and in life, there is no easier way to get to your destination than with a road map. 
call 1-800-926-6526 to request your Roadmap to Victory by Bishop Hilliard. This roadmap has detailed instructions on moving from where you are to where God wants you to be. Call now, 1-800-926-6526 with your most urgent prayer request or faith situation and request your Roadmap to Victory and be on your way today. Pentecost Sunday where the Holy Spirit comes down and that was a whole restructuring of uh, the movement uh, concerning the things of God, the early church's birth, and new things happened as a result of that. So throughout the Bible you can see uh, where awakenings took place that changed the nation, changed the lives of individuals, and uh, preparations have always needed to be made. So that is the restructuring component. Now, so from the days of uh, the building that we had down in West Montgomery, uh, to uh, today, I've always yielded my life to the, the Lord to order my steps, even when it wasn't popular, even when I really didn't know how the end was going to be because I know God only has to give me information on a need-to-know basis. But uh, when I hear the voice of God and he's directed me, I know I have to take one step before I can uh, see the next step. But now I began to see the magnitude of this whole particular, particular restructuring season. It has more to do than just me restructuring for succession in our church. It has to do with you knowing how to make those changes in your life to bring you into better and to new things. So uh, I really want you to understand uh, that when we're talking about restructuring, don't just see it in this, this uh, corporate sense, but I want you to see it in your personal sense. What can I do to bring my life to another level. See, that's how I want you to do it. Look at yourself. What can I do to bring my marriage to another level? I'm not married. What can I do to bring my, my personal life to another le level, my life with my family? What can I do? Because this is what, this is the season that we're in. And so uh, I, I don't want you to miss it. And so um, asking yourself, uh, you have to ask yourself, are you willing to change to experience the next level of better that God has for you? Are you willing to make some fine-tuned some fine, fine -tuned changes, some, some mid-course corrections? Because no matter how good things are, it can be better. Can I get a witness on that? No matter how great things are, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, because three simple points today, probably get to just two of them. One would be the examples of restructuring life for revival. We're we'll going to look through the Bible. Remember now, when we think revival, we've got to expand our thinking. Can't limit our revival to somebody coming and preaching five, five days, uh, and, and we call it that revival. But we're talking about a new awakening, that God awakens me to think. He awakens our church. The Lord told me that in our culture, there's coming an awakening. Yeah, amen, amen. All right? But in our own personal lives, there's going to be an awakening because um, um, God, God, God's going to open your eyes. That's been my prayer. He had me pray. Son, pray for God to open their eyes because there are things that you're going to see that nobody else can see, changes you're going to make that nobody else will even recommend to you, but you're going to understand this is God opening my eyes so I can make the restructuring that I need to make so that better I can experience better. Can I get a, a good amen for that? Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, common passage we've used here, it says there, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. Watch this. Always abounding. That's God's plan for us, to always abound. No matter how great things are, it is his plan for you to always abound. Everybody say always abound. So always abound in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So your effort is not in vain. God wants you to be on an ever-increasing track. Now, in Scripture, I can see it all throughout Scripture where uh, there are uh, examples for restructuring for revival. But before we go there, can I, can I just get you to uh, uh, say to the person next to you, God, come on, go to talk to him. Say, God is taking my life to new levels, my family to new levels. There's awakening for me that will cause my whole life, my, whole life. My, career, my career, my family, my, family. my, relationship, with God my relationship with God to change. 
to new levels. Give the Lord a shout, won't you? Yeah. Now, there are examples throughout Scripture when we want to look for uh, really a plan from God to validate, you got to look at Scripture. All the Scripture is given by, the Bible says, for, for doctrine, the order of God. So if there is a prophetic word on awakening, i got to be able to see awakenings in the Scripture. And so you can go all the way in the Old Testament, you can look at the New Testament, uh, in Joshua chapter 1, what was God doing? He was restructuring uh, uh, Israel for Joshua to take over and move forward. In first Chron Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, which is the scripture that is used for revivals, if my people, what's called my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, heal their land. So preparation, restructuring. I'm just showing you through, through the scripture how restructuring. Jesus in his whole earthly ministry was talking about restructuring. When he says, John 10, 10, I've come that they might have life and heaven more abundantly. Then he began to teach how people needed to restructure their lives, make changes, make adjustments so that better could come in their lives. So all of us who want better got to be willing to look at our lives, evaluate our lives, and say, now, what is it that I need to do? Asking God, now, God, what is it that I need to do so that I can position myself for this time of awakening so that I can have better in my life? All right? So Jesus says, listen, he's teaching him on, time, on one occasion. He says, you don't take new wine and put it in old wineskins. Everybody say restructuring. He was telling them to prepare for something new. You got to do something new. And then on another occasion, he says, now, if any man wants to follow me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Again, he's talking about a restructuring, a, t a time when a person has to decide to do something different, to make adjustments. Everybody say make adjustments. The whole apostles' teaching in the, uh, in the New Testament was about restructuring. Now, go to Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, one of my favorite passages, as we talk about why we study the Bible. Because the Bible is more than just a good book. It is more than just, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 a historical record. But it is God's plan. It is God's plan. It has principles. It is the road map for living. And verse 4 says, for whatsoever, uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So when I study the Bible, and that's what we're going to do today, um, I study the Bible, were written for my learning, that we through patience and the comfort of scriptures might have hope. Build me hope, give me an expectation because I'm studying the scripture. So when you look at individual lives that were restructured, Abraham's life was restructured. God tells Abraham, I want you to leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your father's house, and go da, 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 do this, this, this. What was he doing? He was restructuring his life so that God's plan for his life could come to pass. Gideon's, his life was restructured by God. Because Gideon was just, he wasn't a warrior, anything like that. In fact, he was hiding from his enemies when God came to him. And then God spoke this word to him, told him how he was going to use him in a mighty way. And Gideon's life was restructured. Rahab, who was the harlot that, uh, on the, uh, in Jericho, who, was, uh, who helped the spies get away. And as a result of that, the spies uh, saved her. Although they didn't wipe out Jericho, they saved her. She restructured her life to the point, watch this, that she was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was just a common Jewish girl until the word of the Lord comes to her and she sees now that she has to restructure her life. Everybody say restructure. The disciples, they were fishermen uh, and they had other careers. In fact, the fishermen, Jesus said to them one day, hey, listen, come, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And he took them through three years of teaching them how to restructure their life. Everybody say restructure. Restructure their lives so that they could achieve God's purpose for their lives and experience better. So we have hope for the same thing. Now go to Psalms 1. Psalms 1 and verse 1. Psalms 1 and verse 1. Boy, this is good. I just preach myself happy. I just tell you, I'm just telling you. See, when I, when I, when I, I, when I see where God wants to take us, that's what... See, I, I see more than what you see right now. But I see that this series is going to improve homes. This series is going to improve marriages. This series is going to correct some, some depression that's in your life. This series is going to help you make some bold decisions that you can't make right now until you hear God's word on it and you're going to understand, I need to restructure. This series is going to help you get some folk out of your life that you need out of your life because they are hindering you from where God wants to take you. 
Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law that he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Watch this. That bringeth forth fruit in his season. In his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Everybody say, in his season. All right, now watch this. I, I want to talk now about the examples in the testimony, uh, in, in, uh, the, the, the examples uh, of, of testimony of my seasons. Everybody say seasons. See, you have a season in life for things. Ecclesiastes talked about for everything that's time, there's a season, there's seasons. And you got to know what season your life is in, and so you don't miss the season. You can maximize it so uh, you, 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 you don't look back at having seen a season pass and you didn't do, you weren't fruitful. Amen? And so um, um, uh, there's a season of, uh, of maturation when you mature. That's, that, that's, that's, like the, that's like the spring season, time of pre preparation and planning. Then there's a season of manifestation. That's a time of productivity. And um, that's like the summer. That's like the summer. Uh, then there's a season of multiplication. That season of multiplication is like the fall when there's pruning but still prosperity. And then there's the season of motivation. That's the winter time of protection and promotion. And so uh, in ministry, see, I, I have a, I'm, you know, I'm in another season in my ministry. And see, the point is many people, many preachers don't know their season. And when one season ends and another begins, they still caught up in the old season. Well, it's the same way in life. You got to know what season in, in life you are in relative to different areas of your life. Now, I'm not talking about chronological season. You got it? But I'm talking about in specific areas, in your career. You got it? In relationship. What, what, where, what, what season are you in? And so um, uh, go to Psalms uh, 92. Psalms 92. Psalms 92. Psalms 92. So it doesn't mean I, I, I can only be productive in one season. I'm to be productive in all of my seasons. Watch this. No matter how old I get. Amen, amen, amen. Verse 12 says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Tell the person they say, that's talking about me. Tell them, that's, that's, I'm planted. I'm planted in the house of God. You know what I mean? I ain't never going back to the world. I ain't never going back to foolishness. I'm planted. Everybody say, I'm planted. All right. They shall still bring forth fruit in what? In old age. They shall be what? Fat and flourishing, watch this, to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Now, like verse 15, it says, the reason God, as you mature, go from one season to another, keeps you fat, keeps you flourishing, is because he's getting ready to show you off. <laughs> Amplify says this. Uh, they are living memorials to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promise. He is my rock, and there is no one righteousness in him. So God's going to keep you fat and flourishing in every season of your life. Everybody say fat and flourishing. In every season of your life. Why? Because he wants to show you off. Touch somebody and say, he's showing me off. He won't show me off. Amen, amen. All right, now watch this. So I remember having to restructure my life uh, when I uh, got filled with the Spirit. I got filled with the Spirit and started speaking in tongues. I was in a denomination and didn't believe it at that time. Thank God since that time, uh, that denomination has embraced being filled with the Spirit and speaking with other tongues. But I had to restructure my life because I knew what uh, had happened to me was real, and it was not just for me only but for others. I had to restructure my life when I found out that prosperity and health was available to the believer because I come out of a culture, a religious culture, that really, you know, uh, they didn't believe in that prosperity stuff, understand? They didn't believe in all that naming and claiming. But I had to restructure my life and ministry so that I could 
uh, move forward with it. I remember when uh, God changed my life, uh, my ministry from being a hooper and a singer to being a teacher. That was a radical change. I had to restructure ministry. I had to restructure my life. Uh, for this, this new phase. What I'm trying to get across to you is there will be many restructurings as you go from one season to another and you just got to be aware of it. That is why my prayer is that God opens your eyes because there's some changes you need to make so that you can experience better right now. Everybody say right now. Yeah, and then of course when I wanted to, when I wanted to take my family life to another level because uh, I didn't grow up in a culture I'm not talking about a culture, I'm talking about church culture and a natural culture where family was really modeled after Scripture. The Bible says, God says this of Abraham. I know Abraham because he's going to guide his family after him. In other words, he's not just going to do right, but he's going to make sure the coming generations and his household do right also. But these were all times of restructuring for my own life. Now, I'm in another season of restructuring as I'm planning for uh, what uh, Dr. Irish is going to be doing. I'm passing the baton of pastoring over to her. I'm not abandoning her. I'll be here to watch her, help her, and that sort of thing. She's going to be my pastor. Amen. But then there's another season I'm stepping into. Amen. So at the same time uh, I, I'm, that I'm doing that with her, I'm also stepping into a whole other season of, uh, of uh, relevance in the body of Christ, training preachers and training pastors and, and being the, I still be the bishop of this church, but I'm also bishop and apostle to many others. You got it? And uh, as the pastoral anointing is passed off and vision anointing for the church is passed off to Irisha, then a greater anointing of, of the apostleship and the greater anointing of the bishopric is going to pass on to me. Amen. Amen. Everybody said, now that's exciting. That's exciting. So then, what are our expectations from, uh, uh, for the uh, restructured life uh, for revival? The expectations of restructured life for revival. What is that, my expectation? Now, the reason I want to talk about expectation, I'm not going to go into enemies and all that sort of thing. There's a principle in the Bible where Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he had to do something that was difficult. And for many, when it comes to restructuring, it's going to be difficult. But how do you do something difficult? The Bible says at first in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse, to, uh, no, in Luke chapter 22, he was looking at the cup and he says, Lord, let this cup pass. Y'all remember that scripture, some of y'all do? And then he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. My, 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 times have changed and everyone has to make adjustments to be successful. It's happening in every area, it's in business, in education, in industry. Everyone is retooling to remain on the cutting edge. Now we, the church, must not be left behind and must retool for revival and to flourish in the coming days. Now, for the past 25 years, I've hosted the Strategist Conference in Houston, equipping and empowering people in ministry to be excellent and effective. Now this year, the Strategist Conference, October 18th, 21st, will be a hybrid experience. People, both in person and in the virtual audience. Now, the three powerful days of retooling for revival with workshops and times of intense ministry and uh, dialogue, interaction, music, spiritual motivation that will be like no other. Now, I sincerely believe that God has a retooling faith strategy for your ministry that will enhance your staff and your church, cause it to have greater productivity. Now, I've made the registration cost most affordable, and you and your staff have a choice to either be here in Houston and experience it in person, or be in the virtual audience. Now, go to Strategies, there's it on the screen, strategiesnoc.com for early registration and more information. Registration has begun. I'm saving a seat for you. Go to Strategies, NLC. Com, uh, and I want you to be with us. It's time to retool for revival. What we want to break in, do you have a good time to break in? And listen, you'll be able to go out, of course, and hear the whole lesson. But I want to, I want to really encourage you to connect with me. I want you to pick up the phone and make the call. And when you make the calls up, I want those faith building letters. I mean, it's like me talking with you. I take, I take time to write those letters out and they, they arrive right on time. There's a faith exercise there that stimulates your faith. Listen, I don't want you to miss out. Amen. Now, so when uh, you see them asking for prayer requests or your faith fight, 
That's how you become a part of it. I want you to pick up the phone and uh, make the call. Now, if you want our, a lot of our books and other uh, things that we have, you can. There it is on the screen. The screen. <laughs> yeah, B-K-I-H-B-H, and you'll be able to see the teachings that I have as well as those uh, that my wife have done. I have something that I want you to take advantage of, and it's called Hilliard Faith University. And we have a summer, summer launch that we're going to do. Those lessons I have taught before, and those, I mean, those sessions that we've had, had tremendous enrollment. We want you to enroll for this summer. There is the leadership course that's powerful. Pastors are raving about it. And then there is the sermon preparation and presentation course. It's amazing. I'll help you be a better communicator. And then I'm working on the third course, conflict resolution. All right, go to our website and you'll get more information on it. And uh, uh, I've got to tell you, it's going to be, hey, let's get back to the lesson. I'll come with some closing comments uh, at the close. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, why am I looking unto Jesus? Because I got to run this race with patience. I got to run this race with endurance. I got to do some things that may not be comfortable for me. But how, I'm gonna, how am I going to do that? He says, looking unto Jesus, Jesus is my model, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. That's the key. That's the key. The joy that is set before him, what was he able to do? Endure the cross, despising the shame, sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. So what it says now is, if I just can't look at the difficulties of the present, I cannot make the changes I need to make. Mm. But if I focus on the joy set before me, what is going to look like when I'm at my place? What is going to look like when I'm fulfilling my purpose? When I focus on that joy, it says, I'll have the strength to endure to make the difficult changes I might need to make in my own life. Amen. And so uh, uh, when it comes to you making personal changes, when it comes to me having to make changes in ministry, that's my whole focus. I'm looking at another day. I look at another day because, you know, <laughs> it, 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 I kind of like to use the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, illustration of, of Lakewood because it's a great, great thing. Brother John took Lakewood to one level. That's a good hand clap right there. He was, let's see, most people didn't know the kind of relationship that we had with the old stands. We had a relationship long before we ever, we ever bought the, the building over there. Long before that. Got it? Um, I remember when after they built the, built the, the, the East Campus, the Brother John called me over and we, he gave me a personal tour of all the nooks and crannies of that building. He just didn't give me a tour, take me to the, and say, well, here's the church. No, no, no. Took me all behind the scenes. Of course, at that time, I ain't got no idea why I need to see all behind the scenes. <laughs> you understand? But it was so, it's so, so amazing, the hand of God. But now, you see, he took it to one level, but then uh, when his season was done and Joel's season started, a whole nother fresh anointing yeah. took that church to a whole nother level. Yeah. I, I think we ought to have a better, better hand clap than that. <laughs> Difference is, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be like Mother Dode. I'm going to be here to see it. Amen, Jesus. Amen. So, so we can expect better. Amen. So our expectations are, are, are the things where we're gonna have, we have, we have, we have great expectations because uh, that's, that's what we see. Now, here are the expectations that, that, that we are to be able to expect when we, from restructuring. Number one, the growth manifestations. Everybody say growth manifestation. That's increase. You are about to increase. Ugh. Now, when I'm talking about increase, I'm talking about both spiritual increase and natural increase. See, you got to keep your faith on increase. And many times in difficult times, you start paring back and you start, you know, scaling back. Now, keep your faith on increase. Everybody say, keep your faith on increase. Mm. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Secondly is uh, the uh, glory manifestation. Now, glory manifestation has to do with uh, me understanding that I'm going to be able to give glo more glory to God because he's going to do some things nobody could ever, could ever imagine that could be done for me, and he's going to get all the praise. Promotion's about to happen, and you're going to have to say it's God. I mean, things are about to take place. Increase in your life is about to take place where he alone will get the glory, 
and it's going to be your responsibility to open your mouth and glorify God. So there is a growth expectation. There is the glory expectation. Watch this. And there's the grace expectation. Grace manifestation expectation. Now, by grace, grace is so multifaceted. Well, we're going to see God's saving grace. Folks are about to get saved in droves. We're going to see serving grace. People are going to step up to begin to serve like never before. That's going to be this uh, success grace that God's raising up others to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help us. And then there's the strengthening grace. Those who feel tired, he's going to strengthen you because he says, my grace is sufficient. All right, so everybody say growth, growth. expectation. Glory, Glory. expectation. Grace, grace. expectation. And watch this, gladness, gladness. expectation. Woo! We're about to have some joy. All throughout the Bible, watch this, every revival, and we're talking about revival, but I'm not talking about them five weeks of preaching, but every awakening, every spiritual awakening is accompanied by gladness. Mm. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they were glad. Amen, amen. All throughout the Bible, this whole, st now I'm going to be able to teach these. I'm just giving a summary of the whole series now, but I'm going to be able to teach each one, each one of these individually. But all throughout the Bible, we can see this gladness. There's about to be joy in your house. There may have been fussing and confusion and cussing in your house, but there's about to come some gladness. Some of y'all say, I, can need, I need some of that. I need some of that. Yeah, I understand, but I'm trying to get you ready that with the restructuring, with God opening your eyes, and some of it is going to be just fine-tuned. <laughs> years ago, I got to just tell this. Years ago, you know, uh, I was running with a bunch of guys who didn't like their wives. We get together and we talk about how we didn't like our wives. I was right there with them. I ain't going to lie and say I was there, you know, trying to be all that. No, we, I ain't like Bridget either. And uh, I remember in those days, things were lean, and I was counting my old love offering. I wouldn't let her see what my love offering was. And so uh, she's accusing me of this, that, and the other, and I ain't got enough money for her, let alone somebody else. <laughs> you understand? So I'm all, I'm all mad with her because she accusing me. I ain't messing with nobody, you understand? I ain't got enough money for my own house, my own self, let alone girlfriend, you understand? <laughs> so Pastor Jackson said, uh, uh, he said, uh, hey, you I got your answer. So I'm, I, I'm thinking you're going to call Bridget and get on her to leave me alone. He said, take your little tail home at night. <laughs> yeah, in other words, leave them fools at the coffee house and just take your little self home and be with your family. Amen. Now, see, that wasn't no big startling revelation where you had to go to the Greek or the Hebrew. All I need to do is tell them, fellas, and they wasn't mean to me no good. Every one of them have left their wives. Some of them, the second wife, they left. Wow. All I need to do is make it a fine tune. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm going to go home. Because I'm married. Amen. Easy. Oh, I'm going home. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. See, it's, a lot of these adjustments ain't going to be like the angel after coming and said, this is the angel of the Lord, thou shalleth. No. Simple thing, like what I just said a few moments ago. That's a simple restructure that somebody needs to make that's going to bring some gladness to the house. Yeah. See, that's why you don't want to miss this series. You don't want to miss this series because everybody say, gladness, gladness is coming to my house. All right, now watch this. Let me move on now because I want to take my last few moments to talk about the elements for restructuring. Everybody say elements. Now, the elements for restructuring uh, is, is number one, uh, this restructuring of my, my, my management mentality. What do you mean? I got to manage my life differently. Right? Like, see, we've changed the management of, uh, of, our, of our church. We're changing the management. And uh, as I'm led, I'm led of God, God's opening my eyes. Something real simple happened today because, you know, I got my office in the back and uh, Lady Bridget got her office in the back. And the Holy Spirit said, well, you know you got to get one of these up. I hadn't thought about that. Well, I'm saying your pastor ought to have an office. Come on now, senior pastor ought to have an office in the big building. 
So, you know, I had to, you know, I had to realize that. So, okay. And he said, you let her choose. <laughs> Y'all know, because I, I know what I was going to do, right? You can have Bridget's offer. <laughs> you, you have her offer. I keep mine. No, she said, no, you let her choose. Well, see, it's those simple things. It's a simple thing, but it's a powerful thing. Everybody say simple, simple. but powerful. All right, now, so when it comes to managing things, and I want to get this across, there is, um, you're going to live your life based on traditionalism, based on truth, or based on trust. And I think that's the only place, I think that's going to be as far as I can get today. Everybody say traditionalism. Now, traditionalism has to do, not necessarily with religious tradition, but the, but the, the way you were brought up. Hmm. Living according to what inherited customs and philosophy. Go to Colossians chapter 2. So you're going to live your life by some philosophy, the way you were brought up. Now, that's an enemy. That's enemy number one to restructuring your life. I was brought up where pastor... Never. Only time pastor had succession when he died. And then there's all kind of confusion when that happened. Now God has said, no, 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 son, that's not what I want you to do. I want you, I got another season for you. You got it? You're still in the season of mentoring? I got to tell you, I'm going to be here. Just like y'all see in my face right now. Y'all going to see my face. I ain't dying. And I got pastors around the country calling me saying, here you, we're learning from you. We're learning from you how to do it graciously. Yeah. Amen. And so watch this, watch this, watch this, watch, watch this. But see, sometimes you got to break from tradition. Yeah. Amen. Now, when I'm talking about tradition, I'm not just talking about traditional, tradition when it comes to, you know, spiritual things. I'm talking about just how you were raised. You was raised hiding your money. See, I looked at the Bible. I didn't look up at nobody, though. Verse 8 says, Colossians 2 and 8, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, and, not, and after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So it says, listen, the way I've been brought up may not have been right. May not have been right, so I need to change. Amen. Ooh, didn't get, didn't get, ooh when I get ready to teach that, I see I'm going to have to plow a little bit. <laughs> All right? Uh, I, can, I, can, I can live my life based on truth. Everybody say truth. Now, truth is the standard in God's Word. That's why I spend time teaching you, going from Scripture to Scripture, because the truth for the believer, based on John 17, 17, says thy word is truth. Everybody say truth is the word. Truth is the word. All right? And then trust. Everybody say trust. trust. Now, here's the difference. Truth exposes. Trust executes. Let me give you a difference. See, I can know truth and still not live by it. Illustration God gave me years ago, God goes to the bank and asks the banker, can you keep my money safe? And the banker says, sure I can. So he shows him all the electronic security systems, shows him the guards, shows him the vault, and yet the guy walks out the bank with his money. Well, why? Because he didn't trust him. He saw the facts. He saw the truth. But trust goes beyond just knowledge. See, that's what has to happen for the believer. And it has to happen for the unbeliever. That I can explain all kind of truth from God's word, but then there's that trusting step that you have to say, okay, God, let's go with this. Amen. You have to say, say and, and see, in, in today's time, with the much, as much knowledge that's flying around, it takes a whole lot for a person to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. Because you got all of these negatives that you've been taught, that have been shot at you, but you got to make that step to say, God, I'm going to trust you. Everybody say, I'll trust you. All right, now, uh, let, let me see if I can give another example because um, I, I want to close this thing. Did y'all get blessed today? Yeah. How, how many willing to restructure their lives? To make some changes so I can have better. Make some changes so I can have God's best. That's, that's what this whole series is about. Even though we use the term restructuring here, Corporately, I want you to understand what it means for you individually. All right, tradition, tradition and truth. I'm going to teach this. See, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, let a woman be silent in the church. Amen. 
And we have a member, loving member, and we're, we're trying to be antagonistic. He says, I just need some clarity on that because you say, the scriptures say, let a woman be silent in the church. So how is uh, the woman be silent in the church? And then the woman's going to be the pastor. If I get quiet, I don't know why y'all get quiet. I, I wrote a book years ago called uh, Daughters of Destiny. I recommend that book to anybody. Give you a more extensive uh, 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 a discussion on that as I took scripture. But let's, see, when you study the word of God, the Bible says study to show thyself approved on the God, work not, uh, not, not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Everybody say rightly dividing. Now, when you're going to divide the word of God, you got to understand there's a literal translation or interpretation. Then there is a contextual interpretation, meaning in the context of this scripture, who was it written to? Then there is universal interpretation. Everybody say, <laughs> literal, literal, contextual, contextual. Universal. universal. Now, when Paul was writing to the church, that, well, you, you got to understand, if, if, if we're going to literally take woman be silent in the church, what up there singing for? What bridge up there reading announcements for? If we're going to take this literally, you got it? If it's going to be literal and she's supposed to keep her mouth closed, then she ought to be saying nothing no time. She can't be no guest speaker. But see, that was written to a certain church for a certain time period for what was going on. Because in that particular church, everybody say, stay with him. In that particular church, uh, the ladies were just shouting out and all that sort of thing, and they were really out of order. So he said, y'all tell, because he said, let them learn at home from their husbands. So he was talking about a specific group of people. I'm going to take you through the word about word on it and show you on it, but I just want to clear it. I'm just, I'm not, I want to just bring some clarity about truth. See, traditionalism versus truth. And so uh, uh, then Paul writes again, St. Paul. They said, let a woman be silent in the church. St. Paul says, when a woman is prophesying, let her have her head covered. Oh, really? I thought she's supposed to be quiet. How's she going to prophesy and pray publicly if she's supposed to be quiet? That was because the contextual interpretation of the woman being silent had to do with some specific foolishness that was going on in a specific church. Does God use women? All, right, all through the Old New Testament, we're going to study it. And we, we see this prophetess, and we see this as a woman apostle in the Bible. In the Old Testament, God raised up a woman to lead the nation, Deborah. Amen. So when we look at the order of God, it's already established in the Scripture. Amen, amen. So it's about trust. Everybody say trust. Because I trust, when I come to trust in God, I got to believe God got my best interest at heart. And any time when we talk about restructuring, make changes in your own life, many times may be uncomfortable. Some of you are going to have to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you on this. I'm going to trust you on this. And I'm really excited about my future. I'm really trusting God. I, I'm trusting God. I, you know, you, you have no idea how I pray for you. I pray for this church. And I, I'm being led of the Lord. I wouldn't do none of this if I, if, I, if, I, if I didn't know I was being led of the Lord. But because of that, I know. Everybody say, he knows. He knows. I know God, God has something incredible in store. My conviction is based on the ability of God to work, the accuracy of God's word, the accounting of the witnesses, of God's witnesses and the angels doing God's will. Story is told. Can I close with a story? <laughs> you know, I went on vacation, so I cooked y'all a whole lot of meat this week. Jesus. But that's okay. That's okay. I mean, it's good because, like I said, I got to teach it. Uh, because I want to, when I get into the elements of, of what has to, you know, when it comes to make restructure, I'm going to talk about God, how you have to manage your thought life, how you have to manage the team, people around you, how you have to manage your treasure, your money, how you have to manage your temperament, your whole attitude, your emotions, how you have to manage your strategies, how you have to manage your time, and then most of all, how you have to manage your tongue. Because some of y'all have been around the world a long time, but you still haven't got that tongue under control. But you're going to get that tongue under control, and you're going to watch God do amazing things in your life. Story is told. Story is told. Story is told. So, but but this, uh, this uh, man and his son, they were, on, uh, they were hiking, and the son slipped and fell off of uh, uh, a little uh, cliff. 
and fell onto a lower ledge. And so the father called uh, the rescuers, asked them to come. And the guy said, uh, the rescuer said, we can't get there until tomorrow. He said, uh, well, okay. He said, is your, is your son safe? He says, well, he's on the ledge. And the guy said, well, uh, we got a problem. He said, what do you mean you got a problem? He says, well, the winds in that area are, are terrible at night. He says, our, our concern and our fear is that your son will be blown off of that ledge. So do you have a rope? He said, yes, got a rope. He says, uh, well, uh, lower the rope down and let the boy tie himself to the rope. And then uh, you tie him off up uh, uh, above him. And uh, so when the wind starts blowing, and they will, that uh, he won't fall to his death. So, uh, you know, the uh, father did the same. He did that. He tied, lowered the rope, tied the son, tied himself securely. And uh, then the father was looking for a tree, a rock, or something to secure the rope, but there was none. So now the father had to depend on himself. So he tied the rope around his waist, put a knot in it, and he understood he's got to hold his son when the wind blows. True enough, the wind began to blow and blew his son off the ledge. But his father was holding the rope. The boy could hear his father grunting and groaning all through the night as the wind blew and he dangled uh, in the wind. His father was holding. Morning came. When the morning came, the rescuers came and uh, they uh, rescued the boy. And one of the reporters asked him, were you concerned? He said, well, I, I was concerned, but I knew my father was holding the rope. He said, there's some things. I know my father loved me, but I knew you know, love was okay, but my father used to be a weightlifter. And I knew that he was strong enough. So another reporter asked him, he said, well, I saw your lips moving when you were on the, when you were being, when your father was holding the rope before they rescued you. What were you saying? He says, well, I was encouraging myself that while I was being bounced around, I understood my daddy was able. So I just kept telling myself, I know he's able. Y'all know where I'm going with this. When you're being bounced around in life, <laughs> And all you can do is hold on to your faith. And the rope of faith has you. You got to tell yourself, I know he's able. Some of you are facing some stuff that's difficult. And other folk have written you off, but you got to know you got a father who is able. Can you just tell somebody, I know he's able? It may be a bill that needs to be paid, but I know he's able. It may be a sickness that you got to overcome, but I know he's able. There are times in your life when you got to encourage yourself. When I'm talking right now about this season of restructuring for awakenings in your life, you got to, I don't care what your life, I can't think of better happening. It can happen because he's able. Well, we're out of time, never out of message, never out of content, but we're out of time. Listen, I've asked you to do several things. I want you to connect and stay connected with me. All right, first of all, I want you to join me every Monday night. Oh my God, every Monday night at, uh, at 7 p.m. Central Time. 7 p.m. Central Time for my maximized prayer moment. I teach a lesson and we pray in agreement. It's powerful. Thousands join me. I want you to be a part of that. Secondly, I want you to be a part of the Hilliard Faith University. If you're a Christian leader, I have a leadership course. If you're a minister of the gospel, preaching the word, and you want to know how to be a better uh, a communicator or a teacher, then I have a course on sermon preparation and presentation that is amazing. And so, listen, for the summer, we have a special for the summer that I want you to participate in, and it's going to be amazing. And then the upcoming course that I have on conflict resolution. I've talked to you already about the uh, men's course that I have. I want you to participate. Why do you have so many things? Because I'm a teacher, and I want you to grow in the things of God. And so if you want to uh, participate in that, go to B-K-I-H, B-H, and that's where you can get your paperback. Men at Work, I had a special edition printed just for you. Ladies, I want you to invest. I'm an announcer to give you the information, but I want you to invest in the man in your life and give them that book. Oh, my God, it's going to really bless them. Now, if you have a prayer request, let me pray with you. Let me agree with you. 
Let me have apostolic agreement with you and you'll watch God change things in your life. All right. Hey, listen, the announcer will give you more information about more things. But until next time, you stay safe, you stay in faith, and watch God work. Life is a journey, and in life, there is no easier way to get to your destination than with a road map. Call 1-800-926-6526 to request your roadmap to victory by Bishop Hilger. This roadmap has detailed instructions on moving from where you are to where God wants you to be. Call now, 1-800-926-6526 with your most urgent prayer request or faith situation and request your roadmap to victory and be on your way today. I got mine. I got mine. I got mine. I've got mine. Now what these men are bragging about that they have is my newly reprinted Men at Work book in paperback form. Thousands of men have committed to read this book to get insight on male excellence that God revealed to me years ago. I've spoken at men's conferences and retreats and I've taken the essence of those powerful times in ministry and capsulized them into this literary work. Now it's a manual for Christian manhood with simple truths that I've learned and have mentored men in for years. Well, what's in it? Well, it talks about a man and his maker, a man and his mountain, a man and his mouth, a man and his morals, a man and his maintenance, a man and his mistakes, a man and his mentor, a man and his ministry, a man and his money, a man and his mind, a man and his marriage, a man and his mantle. Ladies, make this investment in yourself to get an understanding of the male perspective and make this investment in the males in your life. Uh, get it for your husband, your son, your grandson, your nephews, or other meaningful men in your life. Men, you make this investment in your own life. It's simple reading and then you live according to God's direction, faithfully, lovingly, and spiritually, you'll be amazed at what's going to happen in your life. Now these are time-tested truths, and they are the real guide for spiritual and biblical masculinity that is just the mentoring that this new generation of men desire. Order yours today by simply texting BKIHBH to 71441. BK. Uh, there it is on the screen, B-K-I-H-B-H to 71441, and it'll be rushed to you today. Something exciting is happening at Hilliard Faith University that I want you to be a part of. Now, you probably heard, you know, when we had the initial launch of Hilliard Faith University, and we had the leadership course, and then we also had the uh, course for uh, the sermon preparation and presentation. Well, listen, this summer, I want you to mark the date, June the 21st. June the 21st is the summer session. What? That's right. It's the summer session, and I want you to be a part of it. Perhaps you could make the initial launch when we taught leadership, how to be strong leaders and how to support the vision of the pastor, the man of God, the woman of God that you are seated up under. Well, the leadership course is six powerful lessons and pastors have been raving about how it has helped uh, them in the, the, those that are around them. Let me teach you how to be a better person uh, to serve your man or woman of God and it rebounds back into your life. And so there it is. That's the registration there for that. Remember, we're going to launch it afresh on June the 21st. And then, listen, that session that I did, oh, the whole course on sermon preparation and presentation. It was like none other. And, of course, it's an investment. I want you to make that investment. Let me help you become a more capable communicator of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I walk through every point of showing you how to study the word of God, how to prepare a lesson, how to write the lesson, and how to present the lesson, and how to be more effective in your communication. Perhaps that's somebody you want to sow this into. 
June the 21st. That is the launch date. You say, well, I want to take both of them. You can. If you desire, you can take both of them because it is all virtual. That's right. It is virtual, and you'll be able to go there, and at the end, you will be able to receive your certificate and display it with great joy and godly proud, proudfulness that you completed it. Let me help you. Now, you know, I'm a teacher, and this setting is taught far different than me preaching to you. It is a session where you get your workbook. What? That's right. You get your workbook, you get the notes, and you follow along with me. It's amazing. Nothing like this specialty university. I'm telling you, I can hardly wait to have you as one of my students on, that's it, June 21st. This is the summer session. Got special stuff for the summer session. This is the summer session special discount. And, and listen, I'm telling you, if you missed it the first time, get it this time. Because in the fall, it goes back up. That's right. In the fall, it goes back up. But we have something special for you. Now, I'm working on a course right now. Oh, I'm working on this course. It's called Conflict Resolution. Oh, my God. All of us have to, have to deal with the housewife, a business person, or administry. Oh, my God. Parent, you know what happened. You know, <laughs> what, I mean, married folk, we all have conflict that has to be resolved. Let me give you God's wisdom on that. You'll be hearing more about this class on conflict resolution. Oh, it's going to be awesome. All right, for the summer session, get the summer discount. June the 21st, I'm looking for your registration. It's going to be amazing. My, 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 times have changed and everyone has to make adjustments to be successful. It's happening in every area, it's in business, in education, in industry. Everyone is retooling to remain on the cutting edge. Now we, the church, must not be left behind and must retool for revival and to flourish in the coming days. Now, for the past 25 years, I've hosted the Strategist Conference in Houston, equipping and empowering people in ministry to be excellent and effective. Now this year, the Strategist Conference, October the 18th, 21st, will be a hybrid experience, people both in person and in the virtual audience. Now, the three powerful days of retooling for revival with workshops and times of intense ministry and uh, dialogue, interaction, music, spiritual motivation that will be like no other. Now, I sincerely believe that God has a retooling faith strategy for your ministry that will enhance your staff and your church, cause it to have greater productivity. Now, I've made the registration costs most affordable, and you and your staff have a choice to either be here in Houston and experience it in person or be in the virtual audience. Now, go to Strategies, there you on the screen, strategiesnoc.com for early registration and more information. Registration has begun. I'm saving a seat for you. Go to strategiesnoc.com, uh, and I want you to be with us. It's time to retool for revival. Partners, thank you for your support. All contributions will be used to support the ministries and outreaches of New Light Church as needed. This has been Maximized Living Today.